What's up everyone, my name is Tony Burke. I'm an AFF instructor as well as SNTA and an FAA certified senior rigger. And today I wanna to talk to you about helmets and mounts and impact rating. So a couple of months ago, I picked myself up a G4. So a G4 is one of the skydiving helmets that now has an impact rating. Um, supposed to protect you better against impacts for skydiving or uh, indoor skydiving, or outdoor skydiving or indoor skydiving. And one of the things that comes up um, a lot with helmets is uh, some things I've seen on message boards is, oh, you know, the G3 helmets, for example, the, the, so this is a G4, but the G3s, which is the helmet I had before this, um, they are, they're just fashion. They're not really helping you out because they don't have any impact ratings. Um, so I did most of my skydiving with this G3 helmet and the G3 is a nice helmet. It does provide protection but there's no impact rating on it. Um, I don't know if it would pass an impact rating uh, test if they did it, but um, Cookie came out with the G4, which does have an impact rating on it for indoor skydiving and outdoor skydiving. And um, so there's been lots of discussions about um, putting camera mounts on them. Does it negate the impact rating? Does it make them useless? Um, and I remember seeing stuff on um, like dropzone.com and some other forums talking about um, helmets being just pure fashion and not providing any protection at all. So let's talk about what the protection, what kind of protection helmets give you. Um, a couple of things before we get started. Um, it's really hard to talk about what kind of protection any, any kind of safety device will give you, especially for impacts um, on the head because there's all sorts of different ways and different types of impacts that can happen um, if things go terribly wrong. Um, there are impacts that you can have on, any, on a helmet that the helmet's just not gonna help. You can wrench your neck, you can break your neck. When I'm talking about the protections that a helmet may or may not give you, there's nothing certain in anything that I'm saying here. So I'm just talking generalizations, likelihoods, um, are you better off with a helmet or without a helmet, et cetera. I think generally speaking, I think everyone can agree you're better off with one of the skydiving helmets than not. One of the things that I've heard is that the G3 helmets uh, and other similar helmets are just pure fashion. And um, that's clearly not the case. Um, there is a nice big gash on the top of this G3. So I've done, I've had this G3 for probably about 1500 skydives. Um, and I, I've hit my head on exits uh, before. Usually I think that's the only time I've ever actually hit my head on anything, but uh, there's this big gash here. So if I wasn't wearing a helmet, this, this big gash here, I don't know if you can see it. If I wasn't wearing a helmet, that big gash would be in my head. So that would clearly cause some sort of like pretty, uh, pretty major head wound. Even if it was superficial, it'd be pretty bad, but it probably would have knocked me unconscious or even worse. So um, I don't think it's fair to say that helmets without an impact rating do not provide any protection. I think they absolutely do provide protection. I think uh, a helmet with an impact rating is likelier to provide more protection than an, a helmet without impact ratings, but I do not think that helmets without impact ratings are useless. I think uh, they're very useful and um, every jump I've ever done, I've worn a helmet. Um, I'm, I can't recommend ever jumping without a helmet. Um, I think most people jump with helmets. Other than these kind of scrapes, I've never needed one, but you know, I've never needed my AED before either. So, but I'm, I've still jump with one. So this was my G3. I, I, I like the G3 mostly because, um, uh, it was comfortable for my head. Uh, not everyone's head is comfortable with every helmet. For example, I tried the KISS helmet and I just didn't like the way it fit on my head. It's a fine helmet, I have no problems with it. Um, it's not impact rated, but neither is the G3. And it just came down to comfort. Um, the funny thing about uh, skydiving helmets from like Cookie and KISS is that you can always tell what a skydiver's favorite color is. So obviously mine is orange. So this is my G3, it was a great helmet. Um, I really enjoyed it, it was very comfortable. I actually got it because my first helmet was an open face helmet and then at jump 50 I did an exit and I got bonked on the nose pretty hard. So I figured I'm gonna have a closed face helmet. So I've been jumping closed face helmets since then. Um, and then a couple of months ago I picked myself up a G4 and one of the reasons I got it is because it does have an impact rating. It is more substantial. It does feel like it provides more protection. There is a, there is a padding on the inside. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what the construction is, 
the G3 is a plastic outer shell and then the inside is uh, padding. And that's the protection it provides. Like I said, it's better than nothing. But um, the G4 does provide more protection, I believe, um, because it not only does it have the same, uh, has I don't know how similar it is to the G3's um, outer shell construction. Um, I don't know if it's thicker or whatever. Um, the inside does have some padding uh, that can be removed now for cleaning, because especially after a thousand jumps, uh, it gets a little funky in there. There's also kind of, it looks like, um, it almost looks like black styrofoam. It almost looks like a styrofoam material, and that's, the, that's gonna be the energy absorption material. So that's the big difference between the G4 and the G3, is the G4 has that material in it, which is probably necessary for that, that impact protection. So um, ostensibly, in, in uh, most scenarios, it would, provide, it would probably provide you more protection in an impact than a G3 or uh, a non-impact uh, rated helmet. Again, that doesn't mean that G3s and Kisses and the other non-impact rated helmets are useless. I just think that the G4 and the impact rating would provide more in most situations. But again, it's really hard to give any concrete answers because um, impacts are different. Um, and there's certainly ways you can impact, you can have an impact that the helmet wouldn't save you. For example, if, you, uh, if your neck was wrenched, then um, you know, you could injure your neck, break your neck, et cetera. So, but I still like the extra protection it provides. Now, one of the, the things that comes up is uh, the, cam the, hel the, the camera mounts. So um, Cookie does sell a camera mount for the G4. There's a misconception that the camera mount entirely negates the protection provided by the impact rating. And that's not quite true. If you take a look at the documentation that Cookie provides, because they do actually sell the mount, uh, they say it will, imp it will affect the impact rating. Um, and I think that's a fair thing to say. I do not think drilling into your G4 is going to completely negate its protection. I don't think it's gonna completely negate um, its ability to protect you in an impact uh, greater than a G3 or anything like that. I think what it does is, um, as they said, it affects the impact rating. Now, um, it affects it in a couple of ways. I don't think structurally it's going to affect the helmet at all. I don't think that it makes the outer shell weaker if you put a couple of holes in it. And there's actually a little, um, it's hard, I haven't pulled out the liner because it's kind of a pain in the ass to pull that out and put it back. But underneath the liner, you have that styrofoam interior that's connected to the, uh, the shell. So it goes shell, styrofoam, that's not really styrofoam, but it looks like styrofoam shell styrofoam padding. If you take the padding off, you see the styrofoam. There's a little slot you can pull out so that you can actually drill into the helmet and then put that styrofoam back um, so that you don't have to drill through the styrofoam. They actually designed it in mind, the, the helmet in mind, to be able to drill in those holes for the camera mount. So it doesn't affect the styrofoam part of it, which I think provides a lot of the impact protection. Um, it doesn't affect the structural integrity of the of uh, the shells, I don't think. Um, again, this is all my opinion, but I don't think it just drilling into it is going to substantially reduce the protection. I think what does potentially affect the protection that this helmet gives you is the fact that now we have a point where we can concentrate impact power. So if I take a blow directly on here, rather than possibly being spread out across more of the surface area, it's gonna be more concentrated here. But I think if there's a blow hard enough directed on here, that's going to crack the shell or, or cause any issues, um, it's probably gonna be a hard enough blow that there's gonna be other damage. So I'm not terrible, you know, I, I don't wanna have an impact that hard. Um, I don't think that it's likely to cause more damage if this is here than a knot, or at least it would require enough force that the damage would be substantial anyway. So I don't think it's affecting, uh, it, it is an additional risk. So anytime we, we put a camera on, it is an additional risk. Not only is the camera a potential distraction, it's a snag point. Um, I have uh, hit my head, wrenched my neck, uh, exiting an airplane because my, you know, the camera caught the top of the door. Um, so it, it does provide some additional risks having a camera mounted on your helmet. But I do not think, in my personal opinion, I do not think drilling into this helmet is going to substantially reduce its protection. I don't think putting a camera mount on it substantially reduces its protection, but it does affect the dynamics. It's not something that you're able to test for because there's different cameras, there's different mounts, there's different places to mount it on. So they can't, 
officially say it's an impact rated helmet with the camera on. So, but it's not like it goes to zero. I think it's, it's not fair to say that putting a camera on any helmet makes it go to zero. In my opinion, these mounts are better than the adhesive mounts that are um, kind of the Teletubby mounts. Um, because those are a snag point um, and uh, there have been skydivers that have unfortunately uh, perished because uh, the lines got caught in the mount and, and uh, put them into a turn too low to the ground for them to do anything about. So uh, I do like the non-snag part of this. Um, I just wanted to talk about helmets and the protection they provide. Just to recap, I think that um, just because a helmet does not have an impact rating does not mean it's useless. I think helmets provide protection across a number of scenarios. I think the impact rating means it pr will likely provide you better protection in an impact. I think that drilling holes into two, you know, two small holes, I mean, if you drill a big hole, it's gonna cause some problems, but I think if you drill two small holes for these type of camera mounts, it does not affect the structural integrity of the helmet but what it might affect is the way that you get an impact. It might concentrate the force in a different way than the, the helmet had been tested for the impact rating. So again, my name is Tony Burke. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this information useful. Please let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and thank you for watching.